Welcome to another month of Anchor Groups. I pray that your groups have been going amazing, that you've been having great conversations, discussions, encouraging each other, building community, and building each other up in your relationship with Christ. This month, we're going to be digging into a new topic because every month we try to take on one of our foundational topics, something that, that's foundational to our faith or foundational to how we operate as a church. And so this month, we're taking on the idea of sacraments sacraments and that that may be a word that you're familiar with if you were raised in the church it might be something you've heard of in the past if you're new to the church or maybe just something you never heard of before that word sacrament might not mean a lot to you and that's okay today we're going to dive in we're going to talk a little bit about what a sacrament is and give you some background information on it and so that in the weeks ahead you can actually dig into the sacraments themselves with your group, with your anchor group. And so um, it's okay if you've never heard the word before, we're going to decode it today. And so let me give you a definition. There's a couple definitions I want to give you. Um, the first definitions, these are straight from the dictionary. And so the dictionary kind of gives two definitions. One is more of a secular worldly definition, and the other one is a definition for the church. And so let's look at the secular definition first. The secular definition that the dictionary gives is that a sacrament is something regarded as possessing a sacred character or mysterious significance. So something that has, that possesses a sacred character or, or mysterious significance. So the world basically says, look, there are these things out there that there's something about them that's special and there's something about them that, that's set apart or mysterious. It's almost something that you might even say the world is saying it seems magical or mystical or something we don't understand. And so we're going to call those things sacraments. Now, that's not exactly what we mean as a church when we talk about the sacraments. We have a different definition. And so the, the definition that the dictionary gives for the church is this, that a sacrament is a visible sign of an inward grace, especially one of the solemn Christian rites considered to have been instituted by Jesus Christ to symbolize or confer grace. And so these sacraments, according to this definition in the dictionary, are a visible sign of an inward grace. And that's, that's a very critical part of the definition. We're going to dive in a little bit more to that definition here in a little bit. And in fact, I'm going to give you kind of a different working definition that we can understand it a little bit better. But, uh, but I, before we dive in too deep to that, I just want to ask the question this, where did these sacraments come from? Where did they come from? That's, that's kind of an important thing to understand. And, uh, I, we, we first need to know that, that the list of sacraments that we have, that the sacrament list has changed over time. At times, there have been a large number of sacraments. In fact, at one point, there were 10 to 12 different sacraments that were listed for the church. And, uh, and so um, they used to include things like kneeling in prayer, death was a sacrament, the Lord's uh, Prayer was a sacrament. The Nicene Creed was a sacrament. There were these things that, that the church for a while regarded as being these sacraments that they, they would observe. Um, and it wasn't until actually around 1150 that Peter Lombard, he was the bishop in Paris, he gave us a list of seven sacraments that the church adopted at that point. So the church is all unified at this point. They all adopted these, these uh, seven sacraments. And so the seven sacraments that he gave were baptism, confirmation, communion, penance, which just means confessing of your sins, anointing the sick, ordination, and marriage. Those are the seven sacraments that are given at that point for the church. And in fact, those seven sacraments are still in place for a lot of people, for a lot of churches in the world. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I've been in the church a while and I don't remember that we considered all those things sacraments. And you are possibly right because in the Protestant church, we don't generally consider all seven of those to be sacraments at this point. Um, there was obviously a, a split in the church. And when we had the Reformation, the Protestants came off. They decided that they were only going to recognize 
two of the seven to be sacraments. And so we only have two of those. Uh, but before we jump into what two we celebrate, let's talk about what makes those those sacraments special. So I'm going to give you a definition that we want to use in our discussions. As you talk with your group today, this is the definition that you're going to want to come back to to talk about what a sacrament is. So here you go. A sacrament is a practice demonstrated by Jesus and extended to all believers that acts as an outward sign and eternal seal of the grace of God in your life. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. A sacrament is a practice demonstrated by Jesus and extended to all believers that acts as an outward sign and an eternal seal of the grace of God in your life. There's five parts of that definition. And if we look at these five different parts, it'll help us to be able to better understand why some things may or may not be considered a sacrament. And so here they are. The first one is this. A sacrament is something that is demonstrated by Jesus. It's something that Jesus actually did during his time on earth that he did, that he showed believers. And so we look at him and we say, look, Jesus specifically showed us these actions. It's not something that was done by someone else. This didn't just come from Paul or Peter or Noah in the Old Testament or Moses. This was something that Jesus himself demonstrated that was an action that was important. The second thing is that it is for all believers. It is something that all believers of Jesus are intended to participate in. It's something that all believers should be a part of, not just a small selection of believers, not a small subset of believers, but every single believer should be a part of these sacraments. So the third thing is that it is an outward sign, an outward sign. And why is that important? Because a, a, a sacrament is something that's meant to, to, to demonstrate something to others and to be a visual sign for, for, for in the presence of others to enjoy with you. And so it's not something that you just do within yourself, within your own head, within your own thoughts. It's something that is an outward sign that others can see and that others should be a part of. The fourth part is that it is an eternal seal. So it's a seal. A seal is something that is meant to go and permanently mark something as having a specific purpose. And so the the, the sacraments are a permanent seal on your life, an eternal seal on your life that are there to give you a mark, to always be able to look back to, a, a, a cornerstone, if you will, to be able to always go back to. And the last part is this. They are there as a mark of grace. That eternal seal isn't a seal of of just hope. It's not just a seal of, of, of goodwill. It's a seal of grace, which means that we're pointing back to that working grace that we have in our lives because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that God has forgiven us of our sins and he's extended grace to us that we might have a right relationship with God the Father again. And so, In order for something to be a sacrament, according to our definition, it needs to have those five things demonstrated by Jesus, extended to all believers. It's an outward sign with an eternal seal for the purpose of marking us with grace. So that is our five parts. So as I said, the Protestant church doesn't recognize all seven of the sacraments as being sacraments within this church, all seven of the ones that were given by Bishop Lombard. So of the seven, we only have two, baptism and communion. We don't celebrate the others as sacraments. Now, what's wrong with confirmation? I mean, confirmation is really just a class that disciples young believers and helps them get a a foundational, fundamental understanding of their faith. That's not a bad thing. What's what's wrong with confessing your sins or anointing the sick or getting married or being ordained? There's nothing wrong with those things. What I want you to do is talk in your group today and discuss what is it about those five other ordinances of the church that might separate them from our definition of what a sacrament is. One more important thing as we close, Um, you might have noticed that today I uh, didn't share any specific scriptures with you. In fact, I didn't share any scriptures with you at all. And that was uh, very intentional because I wanted to make sure that as you walked away from this lesson, you understand that the, the practice of sacraments, the understanding of sacraments 
is not something that is defined by Scripture. You are not going to find a list of the sacraments inside of your Bible. In fact, you're not even going to find the word sacrament referring to these things because sacrament is a definition and a term that was developed hundreds of years after, after the life of Jesus. Um, it, it's a concept that was developed in the church as a way to recognize these special parts of worship, these special actions that we do as part of our understanding and practice of the faith. Now, that doesn't mean that they're wrong because they aren't defined in Scripture. It's just the idea of them was defined later. But what's important to note that if, if the idea and the topic and the list of sacraments is not given in Scripture, then is this an essential that we should be arguing with people over or, or, or excluding people from our fellowship if they don't agree with us? And the answer is absolutely not. There is nothing wrong with someone having a different idea about whether something might be a sacrament. In fact, if you decide that you think, you know what, for me, I think the idea of marriage is a sacrament because I can see how uh, 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 this might mark somebody with grace. Now. There's some parts of our definition that might not apply to that, but if we disagree on that, we can talk about it, we can have discussion, but it's not something that's worth separating our fellowship over. Um, it's just something that we can have more conversations about. So I wanna make sure that as you're having conversations, that you talk to others in your group because there may be people in your group that came from a different religious background. Maybe they grew up in a Catholic church or an Orthodox church or an Anglican church. Those three church backgrounds still hold to the seven sacraments. Does that mean that we are right and they're wrong? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means we, we have chosen to honor these, these practices in different ways. We all still agree that all seven are important. They're all seven are healthy things. Um, we just don't include them in the term sacrament. So um, I encourage you, have some good discussions, talk to others in your group, hear their experiences from their background. Maybe you'll learn a little something about some of these things. Maybe they celebrated them differently than you did in the past. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to dig into our two sacraments. We're gonna dig into communion. We're gonna dig into baptism. We're gonna talk about where they came from. We're gonna look at scriptures and see where Jesus demonstrated them, how he instructed us to practice those things and uh, we'll have great discussions over those things and, and it's a great place for you to learn more about it and understand uh, the path um, that, that got us to this point as a church. We'll also have some more time later this month to talk about the other five that are on our list and to talk about why they are still healthy practices and so we'll dig into that this month. Um, as, as I close, I just want to mention that I know that today was was more of a historical lesson. It was more of a history lesson. And some might think that that's not as exciting or it's not as uh, relevant to our lives as digging into scripture. And what I want to leave you with is this. We celebrate these sacraments as a church on a regular basis. The idea of baptism and communion, we celebrate them regularly. And sometimes they might seem like they are just a ritual, that it's something that we just do repetitively and it doesn't have a meaning. And that's when it becomes dangerous. And so it's very important that we take the time to slow down, to look at these celebrations, to understand what they mean so that the next time you celebrate communion, the next time you experience seeing someone in baptism, that you will understand the eternal importance of them marking someone for grace and seeing how God can remind you of the grace that's at work in your life. So that's our intention this month as we dig into penance, as we dig into to the sacraments rather. And I, I pray that your group has amazing conversations and discussions around these topics and uh, that you have open minds, open hearts, you learn from each other. Remember, even if you disagree, it's okay. There's hope for every soul and we are here to encourage and love one another. Have a great month and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.